Bro, we did it. it did you guys know that the Genesee Brewing Company, based in Rochester, New York, is one of the largest and oldest continually operating breweries in the United States? The brewery that makes Genesee line of beers, which includes the, icon the iconic Genesee, the refreshing Jenny Light, and the original Cream Ale. It's part of the FIFCO USA, the largest independently owned beer company in the United States. So just an amazing thing, and I know that uh, it's pretty close to Rochester, pretty close to home. And we can probably say that the Beard Laws, episode 155, Queen of America and Monday Night Football Cough is sponsored by Genesee Brewery. Yeah, shout out Genesee Brewery. Hey, oh Christ, they're your sponsor. You don't gotta suck their dick. God damn. Listen, <laughs> what, what's wrong with that? <laughs> Nothing. Uh, I went down to that I gas station just to try to find years. someone. They just it, they had just ran out. <laughs> I was so pissed. Uh, well, it's funny so we were mad. we were live with uh, with with Copper John Tyson from Copper John's Beard Company. And I was like, they yeah. have a beer finder right on their website. You just go to Genesee Brewery or GeneseeBeer.com slash finder. And uh, we typed in his area code and uh, the 7-Eleven right near him has it. And he was like, oh, shit. And then the manager of the barbershop, because he just opened a barbershop yesterday, is, uh, goes, oh, yeah, I drink Genesee all the time. I love Genesee Light. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I wish they had here. I wish they had the Genesee Light. Um yeah. I've had both the Genesee and the Genesee Light. I, lo I love them both, but I like light beers more um, for the most part because yeah, I can I can drink more of them consistently. Yeah. The, the standard beers, like I love Coors Banquet's my favorite, but I can only drink so much of it before you just like, oh, God, did I swallow a balloon? <laughs> I'm not as big on the ices, and I know that's the only one that they have near me. Yeah. But I still want to try it because I've never had it. It's, it's one of those ones that sneaks up on you. One time I had a buddy that decided he was going to drink 30 Jenny Ices on the way from here to Watkins Glen Racetrack. He ended up in the uh, the, the NASCAR yeah. inside the track um, uh, hospital with yeah. stitches, a uh, knee brace, and there was a lot of blood. That's a story for a different time. But either way, we have some, a little bit of some breaking news. I'm pretty sure I can show these because they did do one post on Instagram, so I think I'm safe. But they sent a couple of cans that aren't released to the public yet that they wanted us to show off on the show. So that's a pretty big deal. So we're going to oh, show yeah. off the Genesee, the red eye as it, it comes in our part, the full flavor. Full flavor, baby. Hit that like button, people. Smash it. Genesee. Jack, bring it up in the big can. Oh, oh I'm sorry. I'm I so mean, excited. Pro produce so, the show. I'm so excited. I'm just so excited about the new cans. I'm sorry. So these are going to be the new cans. Oh, that's classic. That's pretty. Isn't that awesome? It's still such a classic look to it, though. You know what I mean? I love the fact yep. that they don't get, like, overboard and crazy with their logo, and they're willing to stay the same. Oh, yeah. Oh, I like that. Isn't that awesome? I like that blue. Yeah. The Jenny blue is absolutely amazing. I one time was trying to get a vehicle that I think was Jenny blue. So, uh, yeah, we're, uh, that's, that's the new cans. They're going to be coming to a store in near you at some point. I don't know when, but I'm super I thankful. Wish. For for Genesee and uh, shout out Squeaks Beard. Squeaks Beard. Gotta get him drink from the Jenny Light. And what's even more amazing is I found a hat that I got in 2001, just to prove that I've been a Jenny guy for a while. It's fucking sweet. Oh Very shit! Nice. And what's awesome? It's so old that the website for this is um, beer hats beer hats dot com. Patent pending. They're not a thing anymore. So uh... <laughs> you got that off a website? Yeah. Obviously, I just, I just did you that. mail them a yeah. check? No, it was on, yeah, I mean, <laughs> no, he cut out a rebate out of the back of a comic book. Yeah. He 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 clipped twelve proof of purchases from Jenny Light beer boxes and mailed them in. That's what yeah. he, <laughs> you send the boxes in, and then you send the empties with it, and it just covered it. You got you didn't do that. I mean, <laughs> you just rip yeah, all the tops off. They, they give it to you for the recycling cost. Yeah, it's a five pound mailer envelope, and that's why they are <laughs> out of business. So. Um, <laughs> awful business <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna start the show off with something oh go ahead toby can i just say yes uh thank god today is the first day of fall and north carolina is showing up in style with the next three days are going to be in the mid 70s for the next three days with lows in the upper 40s lower 50s ah i've been Yo. waiting so yes for all those fall and cold weather lovers, is coming. False fall is just about over. It is. Where, where are you boys at up in upstate New York right now, weather-wise? We're a balmy 51 on the drive-in today. Yes. Mm. Yes, we're crisp. 
We're, we're, we're so full of fall that, you know, the women up here got their flannels mm-hmm. and leggings and drinking fucking pumpkin mm-hmm. spice, everything. I dude. got maple leaf shooting out of my asshole, people. Right Jesus. out of his butt. Okay. Well, <laughs> it is what time it is. Time for a little labat. Seems a little jagged and sharp. I don't think that would be a good shape to come out. <laughs> All right. So we were talking a little backstage. We're we're gonna we're gonna go in here, and it's not that we're gonna come out of the gate and try to uh, and get Toby fired up, but I think this is gonna be a good conversation piece, and I don't think there's a potential that Toby's gonna get fired up about this. So the queen passed. That's not what he's gonna get. That's not what he's gonna get fired up about. But the queen passed away, and we're gonna try to have a couple you know prevalent news stories. But obviously, one thing that I want to know, and, and you, I didn't know their last name. Maybe I'm an idiot. But I didn't know the, the the whole royal family's last name. Did you guys know the royal family's last name? I did. A Mountbatten, Windsor, no. Mountbatten. Okay. Did you no. know Toby? No. Well, and everybody was like, there? I thought hey, I was listen. stupid for not knowing. And then the, uh, la- was- the last time anybody cared about the in this country what the Queen's last name was was 1776. So long time. And he's that was a backward L. Either way, uh, yeah, you were right, Brandon. Though it is the House of Windsor. Which apparently means it's their last name, so it is Windsor. Uh, producer oh. Zach with his big brain guess George that their last name was George. I thought that was a terrible George. guess. Um, Queen Elizabeth George. Yes, that's <laughs> that's what he thought. But um, yeah, so uh, so so there was that. So uh, we listened to a podcast called The Middle of Somewhere. Uh, producer Zach and myself. He's the one that kind of showed me about this, and they had an interesting concept. They said, you know what? What if America ended up having a royal family? And then we had kings and queens in this whole royal family. They didn't get into the whole argument of who would it be because they said if they did a poll, then everybody would just vote for fucking the Kardashians or somebody that just didn't deserve to be the royal family. So they said this is what they would do. They said that they would sell tickets, $10 a ticket. You could only have one ticket. All right. And they said this is going to be interesting. So they said based on statistics, they think they'd probably sell 100 million tickets in the U.S. That's a billion dollars. So they yep. have $1 billion. They randomly draw this ticket. doesn't matter if you're, you know, related to your, your cousin that you married down in Alabama or if you're Which rich. We're talking royalty. That would actually be a bonus for you. So you would get a $1 billion and you could put a castle anywhere in the United States. Randomly drawn. Bam. Here's a billion. You're the royal family. You're the king and the queen. You are going to do Because, you know, they, even over there, they still have other people that help make decisions. But so I wanted to ask. Do you have a different idea that you think would be fun in, in in a way for us to have a royal family? And if you could build a castle, they they draw Toby. Where they draw Brandon, they draw producer Zach. Where are you putting your castle in with your billion dollar estate? Oh, tough ones, right? So uh, on the show, they said, uh, you know, they they said the funny they they were going to do a funny one and a realistic one. The funny one was, you know, they put it right in their hometown, which is in um, Fergus Falls. Fergus Falls, Minnesota. In Minnesota. That's where they're from, the comedians. Minnesota. They'd put it there. And Toby Nobody from it like Minnesota that. says it that way, Zach, you dick. <laughs> I, don't so, know, like, I just feel like Toby's Zach really just says Minnesota. Minnesota. Oh, don't I'll kill both know. of you. If I they were talking about Fergus Falls. I was like, how do they say it? I don't understand. They no, say it was, Minnesota. It was the- Fergus Falls. <laughs> okay. I'm not going to lie to you The further up north you get in Minnesota You might start hearing Fergus Falls pronounced that way <laughs> like, it's, But it's still it's pronounced definitely. Minnesota Even up there Quit talking like North Dakotans And making it sound like they're Minnesotans Ooh, Fargo That's how somebody from North Dakota sounds Ooh, gotta go to the Fargo Dome That's so, 100% accurate <laughs> So I, my question is, is is the idea that we want to get, are we trying to protect this lair? We're trying to protect this castle. Do we not want it near a border or, an, or a coastline? Do we want it in the middle of the country or do we, you know, I mean, and then also. Well, I mean, that that would be completely up to you. I mean, what what's your reasoning for having it in like the center of the country? Is it for protection for like take the longest for like a, a foreign, foreign invader to come and, and reach well, the, it? Like the Nazis bombed the, uh, uh, for as, as far as I'm aware, I just watched a documentary about it. Nazis bombed it back in the 40s. So I would definitely want it to be tougher to get to. <laughs> We've got a little vast expanse a little bit, you know. Yeah. I definitely uh, have a moat, though, full of, like, alligators and shit. So I'd have to be somewhere warm, maybe, like, some Florida, you okay. know. Because I was thinking Montana. I was thinking beautiful, big sky country, you know, mountains. Cold. In the, cold, but beautiful in the springtime. Yeah. Okay. That, I mean. 
That's not bad. Mine, uh, uh, mine would be way underground, ooh. underneath a man-made lake in a large valley. Of the shadow of death? Pretty much surrounded, like surrounded by like mountain ranges and stuff like that, if possible. And then uh, have like a false town built around that area. Ooh. And I make it a real town. So yeah, I would I would go somewhere. Well, I mean, you can make it a real town, but it, essentially, and the only and the entrance to it would be like fifty miles from where it actually is. Interesting. Okay. I would definitely go somewhere along the uh, the Rocky Mountain range. Yeah. Smart. But not going top. Have... Of it, though. No, no, not on top. That'd be that'd be rough. <laughs> be rough. I I, I, I think I would kind of style. If they want to come and bomb it, man, you better be ready for a climb. What I'm going to do is we live in the Valley of the Thousand Islands. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put one of them on an island that is there and the beautiful St. Lawrence River. So I could just have this billion dollar castle. Uh, maybe I'll just buy Bolt Castle and I'll just live in that. I'll finish, be like, no more tourists, the... no more wine shows. I'm going to finish that bowling alley that never got finished. And uh, I'm well, going to live it out there. There's there's one castle that's like on an island somewhere. I can't remember. It's over like near Scotland or the UK or somewhere that's um it's a bar and yes. um you can be the owner of it you can you can take over ownership of the bar which then makes you the owner of the castle and the island yeah we talked about that on one of the shows didn't we and yeah. you were like sign me up because they were looking for that person all to day take man over. yeah all day i'll, I'll take that yeah i just got to get that one that one acre plot of land in scotland so i can be a lord before i get the castle Ooh, hell yeah would you get knighted I don't know if I'm deserving of knighthood. I don't know. I mean, you're going to be a king. Yeah, but would I mean, they, let's be would honest. Would you sing the Lion King song? Because I think I would. Like, and there, I know I'm getting this billion dollars. I pull my name. Life? No, I'd be like, I just can't wait to be king. Oh, oh. Everybody. No, I, I, would, I would probably, I'd probably get closer to like Aladdin's Prince Ali. <laughs> That's pretty solid. Uh, so producer Zach, where are you? Uh, where are you going to put your castle? See, I was thinking St. Lawrence River. I, I already did that. But I know. We could but, share a castle. Oh, we could. We could. You could be the queen. Castle, <laughs> castle town, castle townhouse, a town castle. Yeah. Billion dollars. You can probably build a house. You probably build a castle big enough. We'll never see each other. Oh, as long as we still yeah. share an office. Hmm. Be a lot of farts in that castle. Tons All right. Farts. So since, so since <laughs> I took that, that's plan A. Where's plan B? Since you took that, I think. How much Dungeons and Dragons you would play if you were a king oh. in a castle? in a castle i would make oh, sure that all of my friends epic. could just not have to work for a year so we could just play dungeons and one dragons. year you have working. a billion dollars well, I, I don't want to hang out that long dude every every dungeons and dragons round that you guys would play you could just larp it right through the castle well let's we'll see well yeah <laughs> that scratches different niches but um <laughs> i would i think i would go far from a coast and far from a border unfortunately um I just don't like the coastal threat. Okay. Um, I would probably go like, mm, yeah, I might go like north central Texas up in the hills. You could okay. not catch me with a castle anywhere in the south. Yeah, there's a lot of guns down there. You realize how much air conditioning you would need to keep that castle cool, well, even if actually, it was made of the rock. Well, he does it for a living. He would know exactly how that would be good. Yeah, he, he, I would. Uh, Tell me how I much it would take to AC down. Uh, yeah, tell me, tell me how much it would cost to AC down a hundred and twenty thousand square foot castle. Yeah, ten or twelve BTUs. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Just ten or twelve. Ten or twelve thousand. I mean, but yeah, I'm kidding, of course. Yeah. So, no, ten or twelve was funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what that would measure out to. Is that like, that's like it's like one of those little hand, handheld fans you got. That's like a camera. <laughs> maybe yep. maybe 10, 10 BTUs per square inch. It's like it's like blowing out a candle after with an ice cube in your mouth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <sighs> <sighs> All right. Well, that was good. That was a good chat. And then I had one other thing that I want to talk about. And obviously, we are not a sports show. And but this is going to be a little bit of some sports stuff. So I do a. Oh, what? I thought you finished. Um, would would the king and queen of America be able to make knights and dames? Well, I would, would imagine they'd to... have all the yeah. same rights as any as any king or queen, any monarchy, which who, we're who, getting really close to that as it is. 
Top five Americans worthy of being a knight. Toby, go. Top five Americans? Americans. Who would be the first five American knights or dames? Well, what is they're it? all dead. I guess <laughs> my question is, is, is what does it come with? Is it just ceremonial? I don't think it comes with anything in England. Yeah, they'd, they'd be a knight like, uh, what's it, Elton John? Yeah. And McCartney. And one of the and other Paul Beatles, McCartney, I think. Yeah. I think McCartney. all the Beatles are, aren't they? I think just, I don't know. I thought it yeah. all, the, all the people that I would feel Not are Ringo. worthwhile are fucking dead. Do you know what the uh, equivalent is in my home state of Nebraska? It's when the governor gives the, it gives an admiralship of the, of the Nebraska state Navy to somebody. They become an admiral in the Nebraska state Navy. The joke is, is there's no such thing as the Nebraska Navy because Steve we're Martin landlocked. American. But hey, I want to move to Nebraska so bad in this moment. Yeah. But, um, it, I've I've more thought out since we've started this conversation who would be potentially king and queen, but I know we're going to get there at some point. I'll my, just go with it. My question with that is, is does it have to be somebody that is for li- that nobody's 100% liked, but liked by the majority? Because certainly the king and queen and the royal family in England or in, in Britain isn't necessarily. Yeah. Or, or is it somebody that is mostly or... You know what's the what are the standards? What are the uh, well? The- I, I truly believe that a king that a king or a queen has been deemed you know popular or unpopular after they've been, for the most part. It's based on their actions is how they're they're viewed. I would agree with you mostly. I would say partially. Some people don't even like the fact that it exists. That there are these people who are born into this, but that's a whole other conversation. Yeah, like nobody is nobody is ready for Elizabeth to die because they all knew Charles would be the fucking king, right? Yeah, and I've seen that show, Charles in Charge. Holy shit, that was a great fucking show. I know, but I, I didn't know what else to run with it. So, so I guess yeah, let's let's throw a conversation. If we didn't do the middle of somewhere style where it's just randomly drawn because that's a little wild, um, who, who do you think? I guess in this regard would would, would be a good royal family to to have and. I mean, I, I got no. I, I don't think there's anybody that comes to mind for me that I'm like, "Yup, this guy." I think it should be decided on a roughly 25 to 40 part reality TV game show. Nope. Know what they do? Oh, they no, do the God, what is no. it? Jousting with the horses? That can Jousting. be in it. That can be one of the things. I mean, it can be anything them, from take them to uh, what a is trivia it, based game lines? show to tests of strength to your knowledge of the United States and its history to maybe a Bake Off. Maybe a barbecue cook off? No, nah, no, it's just getting out of control. I mean, but I, that's the thing is we have to, you know, let's pick fifty things that are quintessentially American, <laughs> and the person that is the most American at the end of the tallies of those fifty things, they win. There's regional I, scenes I, too, I, like when you tear up. I think it's important this person is well known as well, not just some rando dude. Well, they would be by the you know the wall to wall media coverage of this fifty step decathlon. I barbecue chicken pretty well, and I drink lots of beer. I'm here's, one the, here's one of the biggest problems, and we already run into this with our current government as it is, is we keep looking for people that would fit in the right mold based on like their knowledge of things and their ability to, to make decisions on stuff. Let's be honest. I mean, throughout history, especially the presidency, um, these leaders, they don't make their own decisions. The, the majority yeah. of the shit that they decide, it's from their advisors, which is why we which is why and I, I don't mean to get in a giant political debate but career politicians need to stay out of the white house you need a regular joe schmo we need like a brandon in the white house somebody that hey i'm willing to hear what the people want listen to my advisors and be like that's fucking stupid and selfish that's not what the people want you need yeah. somebody that's no longer driven by money and no longer driven by the politics and i i would say that's the same thing that we need which is why I'm running for president in 2024. Let's um, go. You were here oh, first. Yeah. But, um, Shout but out that's Toby why Brady. I would not pick a king or a queen that's already well-known, somebody that's in politics, not a celebrity, not somebody that's already driven by by the money and things, things like that. I think we would need a regular person that has a, a greater connection to the common person because yeah. that's what I, I understand it's a monarchy and, and essentially dictatorship in the same style with that but the difference between dictatorship and monarchy is a is a monarch is supposed to be a leader of their people they're supposed to be 
coming up with the best for their people to provide the best for their people. So you need somebody that's willing to listen to what the people need and want. Yeah. What were you going to say, Brandon? I, I was just going to say this. The the role of the king and queen in the monarchy has, has changed in England over the past three or 400 years. Look at the ad, abdication of uh, the king in 36, like Edward the Eighth or whatever it was. Uh, he was forced out by the prime minister. And so the king and queen are, are really just a head of state. They're, it's a ceremonial role. They're like the, the figurehead of the country. They don't have any say. Now, do they have sway? Can when they speak, can it change people's minds and the public minds? Yes, in that yeah. sense, they have political sway. But when it comes to the ins and outs, it's the... the and in all honesty, that's, that's, exactly, that's exactly what the, what the president in the United States is now. They're, they're just a figurehead. They're just... All they are is the spokesperson for other people's ideas and other people's ad, uh, advocacy. They what just, about they the, the Ginger the Billy guy? Yeah, I'll vote for oh, God, I would. Yeah, absolutely. I'd, I'd make him boyfriend. fucking ding in a heartbeat. Yep, that's so the you, one. Who, yeah, who, 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 what is the, the Cluffs from uh, from TikTok? I would vote for for King, somebody who I think we could all get behind, somebody who we all is a likable character. Dwayne like Rock Johnson. Tom Hanks. Okay. I mean, like, I don't know who Queen I, I would be, but I'm just saying he's for the most part he's, he's still a little too political, though. Definitely, I would agree. I mean, well, who's not in Hollywood? But I mean, everybody's political in some sense. But I, I mean, and I don't think you're going to get somebody who's not political. I mean, even the the royal family's political. I know we're getting off on the woods here, but <laughs> even the royal family's pretty political, and the Queen was seen as political, and 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 they've definitely used their their weight to sway public opinion and, and uh, even legislation in some sense over the years. Would too. you guys, if you were king and queen, uh, you know, part of the royal family, would you drink more tea? I just started to drink tea and it's uh, it's interesting shift. I, I've only had it's, it twice. It's a lot stronger than people believe. There, yeah. There's that argument. Mm -hmm. There's that argument is tea stronger than coffee. And to, to tell you the 100% honest facts, no, it's not. It hits me harder, though, maybe because yeah, I'm it, so used it, to my bones it, coffee. It will, but. but as far as caffeine levels go, coffee is uh, American coffee is much stronger than than. Yeah, uh, and I don't love the taste of it. I don't know what it is. I got to get used to it if I if I want to make the switch. But I, I, the only reason I, I I did it is because I read an article that said that drinking tea daily makes you smarter and it can help fight cancer better than coffee because of some shit in it. Some words that I just can't pronounce. But either way, that's that, that's there or there. I, I do love beer. What is Brandon beer. drinking? Um, orange. Am I allowed to say? Are you drinking Tang? No, it's not Tang. It's just some off-brand um, sugar-free drink for water. Just spray Sunny water. All right, let's let's cut, let's go through this one thing that's in the in, in the other thing. Uh, again, we're not a sports podcast. We're just going to talk about it because farts are funny. Every time we talk about farts, people laugh. So Dan Orlovsky. I don't know if uh, if you guys know Dan Orlovsky. He was a quarterback in the NFL. He's now doing some Monday Night Football. Made his Monday Night Football debut. He actually made one of his first debuts on the Pat McAfee show. Butchered it. Was not good on there. Was not good at free flow and not great at talking. Well, it sounded like he ripped a fart really loud on live TV. And it's been this whole debate. What did what he game fart? Was he, what game was he hosting? It was the Monday Night game. It was either the Bills or the Vikings and Eagles, I believe. Let me see if I can pull this up because it's all over the internet. And uh, I want you guys to be the judge of did he fart or did he not? It was um, it was the Bills game, apparently. So um, let's just type in Dan or last he fart. All right, right here. This, this is, appears to be it. I, I have my opinion on it, uh, and we'll let you guys listen to this and um, see there. And I'll put a poll up to say, do you guys think that Dan farted or not on live TV? quarterback is the most indefensive quarterback in the nfl now the big oh. the big the big change he didn't fart i think he he messed up his words and went and went yeah that's my initial thing but there was so the big theory is be there was there's two big theories and this has been like all over the sports world this with everybody that he doesn't get along with the other ones so somebody made the fart noise when he was doing that or two that he ended up like apparently there was another view where he moved the mic down near his butt for some reason, and there was uh, and that's when it when the when the mic went down there, and then you actually have the other announcers with like a weird reaction, but it sounds like a mouth fart, right? It, it does. It sounds very much like a how it it was too clear of a fart for it to be for a man sitting down and yeah. or standing up in a open stadium i mean you're talking about a mic that's like this far away from your face that's supposed to be somewhat noise canceling 
Yeah, and you can barely hear him. You know, those those guys are not really loud when they they hold it like, I mean, as far as my microphone is for me. And if you're on the if you're on the mic and you make a mistake like he just did, clearly he had a brain fart. No pun intended. Ah. That's why it's, it's tough. To, sometimes I say the word rather if I make a mistake or something like that. I've got friends that huff and puff, get mad at themselves when they make mistakes. The key, funny side thing, if you're getting into journalism or, or broadcast media, the key is to never, ever, ever let the other people listening in to know that you are mad that you made a mistake. Everybody makes mistakes. You move on. So because when yeah. you do that, it magnifies it. Yeah, you just you, a great filled, you, you filled in with what you call a recursion word, like you said, like rather, where you make a mistake, you go oh, rather, blah blah blah, and, and change it. So we we all agree, I guess that um, that it was a mouth fart. It was a mouth fart. But um, there there is uh, there there is something that um, that we all have to agree or disagree on. Uh, Toby, are are you ready for the hot takes? Are we gonna are we gonna do that again? Oh, I'm ready. Okay, we're ready. We're going to do the hot takes. And then we have a special surprise. Brandon has actually made something, and he's going to eat something live on here. The difference between a couple of different items that we did uh, announce a little bit earlier. So we're going to do that, and then we'll get into the word of the day by producer Zach, and then we'll see what time it is. That was, that was a good free-flow conversation. Hopefully you guys all enjoy that. And the people that did ask a question for the picker wheel, we'll do that at the end, and I did add those. So we're going to do the intro for hot takes as soon as is I find it and I did. Let's do it. All right, today is one of great debate, you guys. Like uh, you hear this conversation happen a lot uh, at bars, family gatherings, Thanksgiving. Uh, bat mitzvahs, all sorts of places. So this is, a, this is a hot topic right here. And we need to know how everybody feels. Which is better, guys? Butts or boobs? Oh. This is butts are better than boobs. Do you agree or disagree? I'll go first, I guess. Um, so butts are better than boobs. That's agree. the statement. I agree. Okay, so... So Matt agrees. Zach? I agree. Butts are better than boobs. I completely disagree. Breasts are better than breasts are better than the butt. I agree. <laughs> and that was so painful for you to say. No, it I was I'm trying to think of the perfect metaphor. You know, I think it, may I explain or do I need to just say why I agree? Well, I mean, we're all going to uh, uh, since you guys have the majority, I will let you guys each give your argument first as to why you feel the way that you do. And then I'll give mine. Hey, Brandon, since you're you're in the mood, um, go ahead. <laughs> since you're in the mood, Brandon, for the generally speaking, this isn't always there are exceptions to this rule. A nice set of tits are like a nice painting on the wall and a nice butt. It's like a good video game. Uh, I can use the video game and I can waste time on the video game. When it comes to boobs, it's nice to have on your wall and to show your friends. But, uh, uh, I mean, not necessarily quite like you would imagine that. But <laughs> Hey, buddy, check out what I got here. But um, but for the most part, it's, it's all just – it's like getting an award as a journalist. It's nice for your resume and for your mommy. But it's not really, it doesn't have any meaning. There's nothing there to it. I'm I, I'm not going to lie. I'm a little confused as to how you couldn't apply that same analogy towards towards butts. Like, what is it that makes the butts the video game and the breasts the artwork? Brandon loves playing video do games. He's never been to an art museum. Do I, do I need to go here? Do I need to like? We, this is what the argument is. As of right now, if I was if I was a not if I was a a non-partition judge, right? Like I've got no, I've got no horse in the race. I would say that was that was a that was a weak argument that didn't really make a statement on behalf of your argument. Boobs are very useful in grabbing guys' attention. Boobs are very useful on the front end of a relationship. I mean, if you want to get a guy's attention, you're not necessarily going to get it unless you're walking away from him and it's well lit area. But when it comes to boobs, oh man, I mean that's the first thing I'm noticing and through my peripherals. And trust me, I've I perfected my peripheral vision. Uh, <laughs> but I will say there is some there is some uh, there is some equation here on both sides e equality. 
with being able to do with one thing that you can do with the other thing in some sense. But there's also uh, something that you can do with one thing that I like that you can't do with the other thing. And that one thing that I like to do with the other with the other thing, she likes it too. So if, it's, you tell me, if you tell me that you can't suck or fuck a set of tits, we've got an argument again. I did not say that. I said it's probably more enjoyable for a woman when I do the other thing, potentially, generally speaking, than it would be to just, okay, okay, here we go. <laughs> All right, we're going to we're gonna slide over to producer producer Zach cool. on Team Butts. Well, I mean, we got we, we all have to say our, I, it's I, three against one here, and this one is going to get pretty. He, he's he's just I going mean, like he Mr. Is, Burns. I, know, he's I got all of I got pretty, all of my pretty. heated argument out with Zach earlier with the pronunciation of Minnesota. I call bullshit Minnesota. I just I feel like Toby came in with a lot of vitriol. For hey, don't don't hey, back on track. Come on, team butts. Yeah. Team butts. I, I don't know, man. It's just a primal thing for me. I mean, I, I I just I like butts a lot more. I see a, I see a, I, I see a juicy butt. It's like it's a juicy butt. I just I like butts more. There's really maybe it's because I was bottle fed as a baby, you know. Maybe I didn't get that. Maybe that's not there. But you were bottle fed, so you never got the chance to get attached to the breast. Yeah, I mean, yeah, maybe that's what it is. Quite literally, Your mom always told me I was a pain in her ass. So <laughs> I okay. I don't know. Maybe this is Oedipal. But I just, it's a hardwired thing for me. Say edible? Edible. Oh, that could be a word of the day. Either way, so so for me, I mean, <laughs> oh, there, there is a there is a, a song about liking big butts. And this I can't lie that it's it is true. one of the greatest ones. Because let's face it, if it was about liking big boobs, I mean, it, is there a song about liking big boobs? Joe Walsh, I, I-L-B-T's. Stands for I like big tits. Yeah, but yep. it, yeah, but how many people really knew that over I like big butts because liking big butts is there. And also, next October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and watch out for the beard loss thing because we got a cool T-shirt coming up. And breast cancer fucking sucks. Yeah, there's All no right? butt cheek cancer. Yeah, have you ever heard of uh, butt yes, cancer? Yes, yes, there is. Hey. Butt cheek cancer. Guys, this is my argument. Stop chiming in, producer Zach. Sorry, it was a question asked. I know during my time. Jeez, how do I mute this guy? Anyways. You get my point. Breast cancer sucks. It kills people. Butt cancer, apparently. I've never heard of anybody. And I worked at a hospital that had a cancer center, and there was never one person there who was like, hey, I got the butt cheek cancer. And if you were, I'm sorry that we didn't have a conversation. But enjoy your new TV. So uh, th that's the reason that I'm going to go with. Uh, <laughs> I, I I just, I don't. Listen, and I think the argument here is, is you know, my husband's a butt man and a boob man. We're all fucking butt and boob man. I mean, come on. I mean, we're not like... But we're being ch forced to cho choose right here, so I would I would definitely say that uh, that butts is where it's at, fam. Butts is where it's at. Yeah, listen, there's nothing better than a, a nice set of fun bags. I don't give a shit what size they are. They can be itty bitty. They can be giant honkers. The fucking nipples. I you know listen like I'm all about sucking on a nipple, um, squeezing them together, just playing with breasts in general. They feel great. They work as a great pillow. I understand. Yes, you can do the same thing with with an ass, uh, but you know what? Uh, you don't spew shit out of the breasts. And uh, once we start talking about fecal matter, I am one hundred percent out. And that take is showers and wash it up with soap. I don't care. You know what else looks better being washed up with soap? Tits. Oh man! We can talk about, we can talk about body. I love washing titties in the shower. We can talk about body fluid coming out of certain places, and that doesn't stop me with other things that haven't been mentioned yet. <laughs> So, I mean, that's... We know you like dick. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> so, I mean, apparently, you guys, like, you, if you're walking, you know, say, down the street, or the, or the first time you met the person that you're with, if you want to play at that card, like, it, what did you notice first? Was it the tits or was it the S? Oh, my wife's certified dump truck that she's got right now. I, oh, I will. I, listen, it, but my argument does not mean by any means that I don't appreciate a nice ass. What I My argument is... I prefer the breasts. I, I like breasts more. I think they add more to a woman's shape. Um, and um, uh, they give they give life. They give they give the liquid life to babies. So, yeah, I think there's it's, there's more benefits to, to breasts than there are to butts. They also right kill more. one in eight women get breast cancer. Did you know that? That's true. And That's I'm, I'm sure Fuck there's. Cancer. I'd love to look up the statistics for the number of men that die from being suffocated by having their face sat on every year. So, 
Oh, you think titties can't su su suffocate you, brother? Oh, no, uh, I know they can. She's pregnant. <laughs> I love it. I'll also tell you this, that uh, my wife, who's pregnant with our second baby, who's going to be due in uh, December, and my first child who was born, would not have been born had it not been for that big, beautiful booty she's got. So, uh, I love you, baby. But, uh, so, I, I, I leave it at that. I mean, I, we could make that, that same argument on both sides. I, I will say Elo's right. Uh, you ever slapped a titty? I mean, yeah. it, it's, it's, I, I mean it, it's not the same. It's not the same. That's all I'm going to say. And the, I mean, there's a thing I don't know if from, hey, from you, but they do the Brandon, lift right? and slap, and they don't like that. They, it feels yeah. bad on them. Yeah, we call it the sound dunk here. Oh yeah. So I mean, all right, that was that was good. That was a good argument. I was definitely expecting uh, a fifty-fifty, but we went three on one. So um, the polls already out there. It looks like some people have already voted, and um, butts are better than boobs. They went seventy-one percent disagree. 71% disagree. I think they went basically on their preference uh, rather than uh, the debate, but either way. Which is why the poll isn't supposed to come out until we finish our argument, Matt. Yeah, I know. I jumped the gun. All right. You got talking about butts and boobs. I mean, sometimes things happen and you just get excited too early and it is what it is. But uh, no, that was good. Either that was hot take. Guys, that makes me 2 and O. Oh. Oh, shit. What about, we well, did it three times, though. Are you 3-0? You yeah, twice. you're 3-0. You've only done hot takes twice. No, we did it. We did no, two we did parts two yesterday, last episode, because I remember well, I, I was I giving up. I got cheese. it on both on the last oh, one, I think. Yeah, yeah, I was the only one that would give up cheese or uh, would give up cheese for oral. Yeah. So, speaking of cheese, I think it's time for Brandon's little segment. Brandon, are you ready? I Let's am. And speaking of breasts, it? this cheese was made with breast milk. Um, I'm kidding, but uh, <laughs> hold on, right. hold on, one second. I want to press this button. <laughs> um, so I decided. I didn't clip it. I decided to. Uh, there's a TikTok video out there just like it. But uh, I decided to. Uh, I started this last night when I was in bed. What is my next food video going to be? Didn't even think about it with the show. Matt talked to me this morning, and I said, "Let's do it for the show." I was going to make two grilled cheese. Is grilled cheeses? Grilled cheeses? Whatever. And uh, you guys have seen it on the internet. Some people use mayonnaise on the outside of their grilled cheese to crisp mm -hmm. up the grilled cheese. Some people use butter. Always use butter. Never use mayonnaise. Not a fan of mayonnaise. I'll eat it in tuna salad. I'll eat it in chicken salad. Don't normally like it just on its own. Smell alone is enough to throw me off. Reminds me of my first girlfriend, Jessica. But uh, uh, Oh, we said names. But uh, Jessica, how's the bank job going? Um, <laughs> I'm going to show you what we have here. I've got half a sandwich because I did a TikTok on it too. I've got half a sandwich each and I want you guys to guess by looks alone and these were cooked at the perfect, at the same time, at the same temperature. Those are uh, very well cooked uh, grilled cheese, right there. You told me earlier, and I paid attention. Well cooked, really. I've seen some brown, brown cheeses that are grilled cheeses. This isn't that? I'm not going to guess. I, I know which one you showed me earlier, and I paid attention. So no, no, I, I don't mean it. well cooked, like overcooked. I mean, oh, they, well, they, they look like they're they're well done. Yeah. Thank you. So yeah. we've got this side is the butter, and yep. this side is the mayonnaise. And one no, thing I no. noticed. Obviously, you know butter, but the one thing that the mayonnaise does is it creates a, a kind of outer shell along the cr along the crust that makes it a little crispier and about equal equal crisp on the. It's a little softer over here, I guess, and a little crispier on this side. But I'm hard over here now. But I'm going to try. I mean, we've all had. This is a little cold now, but they both are. But we've all have had. You, butter. Now, have you ever had a, uh, a grilled cheese with mayo? Not before. Oh, uh, no. Not before really today. So. What kind of mayo is it? Hellman's real mayonnaise. Hellman's real mayonnaise. Hell yeah. Hell, hell yeah, brother. Two slices of cheese. Smile. What good. kind of cheese? American? Looks like we got craft uh, singles yeah. on there. No. Nope. No. Nope. Double craft. And now we're trying the mayonnaise. Here we go. There is no smell to it, which is what at, when I first took it off, I was like, there's no mayonnaise smell to it. So that's good. Oh yeah. Oh well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there it is. Yeah. How? How? You know yeah. That's how I cook mine every time. Yeah, I actually the only a way bit to cook of, I actually sp sprinkle uh, so I'll put the mayo on and I put just a sprinkling of uh Goya adobo Ooh, seasoning yeah. on it and then I grill it up. But it is So one thing I, I will say about the mayonnaise is it 
is it increases that umami flavor, that that mm -hmm. savory cheese, mm -hmm. and it brings out the the, the saltiness of the uh, of the cheese, and also the bread is pretty crispy. Yep. Uh, you can't go wrong with this. I'd eat this every day of the week. The the butter, but I mean, there's just something about that that's just really good. Um, one thing I've also tried that you guys probably will laugh at some of you unless you've tried it. Uh, I've done grilled cheese, just normal. Throw the mm -hmm. cheese on there, and then I sprinkle brown sugar on it. And then grill it. Ooh. I'm telling you right now, Ooh. you might think it's gross. Try it. That sounds like a game changer. It is a game That's changer. I thought you were going to this. Use it with good cheese. It doesn't matter what kind. Use it with good cheese. Probably not pepper jack, but use it with good cheese, whether it's you know cheddar or mozzarella. It changes the flavor in, in the positive way. It's not just – you don't want to put so much that it's going to be gritty with sugar, but yep, enough to right. where it will melt with the cheese, and it is mm -hmm. amazing. It's amazing. That's brilliant. See, I so thought I wonder. Gonna so with, I, I, uh, I, I challenge you, I challenge you to this. Then, Brandon, why don't you try that with a with a mayo grilled cheese sandwich? Then, I mayo and see sugar. if that mayo actually makes that already delicious sounding grilled cheese that you said that you've already had, and see if that makes it better as well. I will try that. See, I thought you were going to say that you take your prepared bread and then you hit it with a little Parmesan cheese. Then you throw okay. that down on the griddle. Done that's that. what that's what I do. That's I do. Yep. Little, so you have cheese on the crispy. outside and the inside. Yeah. Yep. Oh. Yep. That is pretty good yep. too. Have you uh, have you ever just had a toasted cheese sandwich where you just put the just put the bread in the in the toaster and you just toast it and then throw the cheese in the oh, middle? Oh yeah. I like just. A, I, I, I know it sounds school. weird, but I am a I am a very nostalgic person. I still love just my standard bologna and cheese sandwich with nothing else like I, I mean literally like no mayo no butter no nothing just oh, yeah. bologna cheese two slices of bread and do a couple you, doritos I, in it oh no, i do I love for, uh, you know what i i didn't know i was afraid to say it but i love throwing chips in my sandwiches shout Absolutely. out toby That's especially what... like standard like um like just like tostitos corn chips Okay, you with all that super right. salt and that the the thin crispiness to them, mm -hmm. man, there's just something about it. Man. I gotta have a layer of it. I gotta have a layer Dang. of it. Yep. I yeah. Do you do you go to the deli and get bologna, or do you get like the Oscar Mayer with the yellow in the in the oh, plastic dude, I, package? I'm I'm, a, I'm an Oscar Mayer wiener man. You're an Oscar Mayer guy. I, I love I, how, I love how Dustin we said do this. like our Nathan's Redneck, bologna too, though. Redneck, Redneck lettuce. lettuce. <laughs> Brandon, you a chip guy in your sandwich? Hell yeah. I waited till I like you took a bite. Lays or ruffles? Ruffles Sometimes are again. I like ruffles. Doritos the ruffles. The trick. Dorito guy. See, I, Dorito. I, I've never put a Dorito on a sandwich before. I'm a Lays barbecue guy my bologna sandwiches, and I like putting uh, cheddar sour cream ruffles on sandwiches, and I like putting uh, salt and vinegar chips. I am, I'm I like not going to lie to you. I, I can't stand Cool Ranch Doritos unless they're on a sandwich. Okay. If I put them on a sandwich, they add... Like a little bit of tang to it that's yep. like perfect. That's my go-to. Is there a better potato chip? And some of you are going to disagree because you don't even like it. But is there like there's for me a Ruffles sour cream and cheese or whatever the flavor is. That, oh my god, it's just yeah, it's so and they part of it sour cream and cheddar. I think is what it yep. is. Yeah, yeah. How yeah. much the dust on there is just so is so good. It gets in the little ridges. Mm. Ruffles Let me chips throw this. are already by far my favorite chips. Have you had all dress chips? <sighs> Have you heard of all dress chips? Uh, no. Oh shit. So it's a Canadian thing. I'm going to We gotta so, send some to bring Okay, them. we're gonna send them to both of you. Yeah. Okay, in the mail. And then when we get some of the Genesee stuff, we're gonna send them to you yeah. and we want you guys to try them for the very first time live. live. They are, in my opinion, and I will go right as we're live to say they are my favorite chip in the entire planet of any chips I've ever had. What's your favorite all dress chip brand? The uh, Humpty Humpty Dumpty baby. Yeah. I think you. I think my favorite Ruff my favorite specific chip is by far the TGI Friday bacon and cheddar uh potato skins chips. Yes. Not going to lie Toby, you can officially wear your Toby I'm an influencer badge because of this. The day that you I think it was on the Tuesday show I think you and Yuvin got talking about the TGI Fridays bacon cheddar potato skins. I was like a heat seeking missile for a Valero the next day. I'm like, I need to find these fucking bacon cheddar 
uh, skins because I hadn't had them since I was like 12. And then I found them yep. and then he barely made it out of the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I'll destroy a bag of those so face. fast. Oh, they're gone. Destroyed. I Deleted as the kids like would the say. Small bags of those on Amazon for like 23 bucks. I was like, yeah. I just got so excited about it, I missed my mouth when I, I just that. went to take a drink of my beer. I did. He spilled the cream ale on his cream ale shirt. Ah, that what a what that was a good that was a good uh that was a good piece of conversation. I love it. And uh, I can't wait to send you guys all dress chips. Yeah, remind me we're gonna pick them up. We're gonna give them in the mail and uh yeah. we'll we'll send them out. We did do a poll of mayonnaise or butter for your grilled cheese before the poll that we did, and it was ninety three percent butter. Yeah, yeah I sorry. I think the that I think the like butter 90, lobbyists are behind that one. That sounds like ninety three percent of the people have not ever even tried yeah. making a grilled cheese with mayonnaise. It was to be honest, with you, I'm I'm in that camp because I, I totally was turned off by the idea of mayonnaise. I don't like mayonnaise, but I want to put that on fucking bread, and I wouldn't ever put it on a sandwich. So why would I do this? Yeah, and, 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 I will, and it doesn't. You don't have that mayonnaise taste to it when you when you eat it. No, it doesn't. Yep. No, it's awesome. Yeah, you guys should all try that. And then we did a poll: Do you put chips in your sandwich? Sixty-two percent of people said yes. 39% of people have uh, just, just there's 65, sorry, 65 and 35 now. The, the the votes are going up. So, hey, we go. There we go. That was, that was some good conversation. Um, Producer Zach, you got a word of the week? I do have a word of the week. All right, let's, let's press the thing. We'll get in the word of the week and then maybe we'll uh, spin the picker wheel or something. All right, let's go. Word of the week video is right here. Producer Zach, word of the week is perturbed. Perturbed. Feeling anxiety or concern. Unsettled. Is that it? Before Brandon ever tried making his grilled cheese sandwiches with mayonnaise, he was perturbed at the thought of mayonnaise entering his beloved lunchtime classic. Perturbed. Ooh. Per perturbed. Welcome to my house and enjoy the football game, but if you take a poop, I'm going to charge you perturbed. <laughs> <laughs> I, had, I had somebody try to use a large word on me the other day as if like i had never heard of it before and i is he, he said that's very serendipitous of you i was like not at all actually it's yeah and I, weird. he's like he's like you know what that means i was like i'm 47 years old <laughs> i'm not stupid like i grew i grew up in minnesota's public school where it's pretty high up there so yeah we learned that kind of stuff when I was in grade school. <laughs> when I was in the grade six, I figured that shit out. Um, shout out also to, uh, to to the band DDS with the intros and outros. Remember I was telling you guys about all the copyright shit? Yeah. We're still getting them. We're still getting them. Finally, disputed, disputed, disputed. Got the emails today. Last two disputes, we were victorious. So we haven't got one since knock on wood. So uh, still going to give them a shout out and we put it out there. That's the, that's the record right there. I have now the they say like, that there's a way that you can like submit like a certificate or like something like a document that you have, but every dispute that I've made, it doesn't give me the opportunity to like attach anything to the dispute. So I don't know how people are doing. It was that. a description. And then uh, with, they had, and then the, the person that you submit it to has 48 hours. If they don't respond, then it's automatically approved. You get 48 hours. Mine say 28 days. When 48 I... hours is what it said on on, uh, on YouTube, that the, if the other person doesn't respond within 48 hours, it's automatically accepted as an okay on your end. And I went through, they responded within like hours. And I did get a hold of my buddy. I said, hey. And he's like, hey, yeah, you absolutely have approval. Just let me know. And, uh, you know, if there's anything I can do. So, I mean, it, it's obviously a cool thing, but I... Just want to give a shout out to them because we did throw that uh, we threw that in some YouTube descriptions. Hey, hey, Matt, I don't know if that's changed you on YouTube. Need a shout out, because... shout out to our YouTube members: Need Auto Metal Queen, Zach Sweeney, Toby Army, Bomber Five Two One, Grimlock, Elo, Lalita, Copper John's Beard Company. The person after this is Willie Webbs, Rozzy Gardner. You've been whacking off. Who's whacking off? Where's he whacking off? Huh? Jennifer McCown, McCowan, and Kush Kelly. If you want to join in, you want to get your name. Shout it out every week. There's now two tiers of it. So, uh, I mean, you know, maybe some people, they don't have an extra $4.99. That's fine. There's one I think that's like 2 or three ninety nine now. And if you can't afford that, that's cool, too. We just appreciate you being here. That's all I got about that. So, uh, that's cool. You guys want to do the picker wheel? Yeah. I found Elo on TikTok this week. Oh, you creep. 
Well, she popped oh. up on my for you page, and I'm like, hey, oh. I know that name. I know that name. And right. That's bubble wrap. Bubble wrap. So we we had spun a couple of weeks ago the most drunken moment, and I feel like that's something that Logan should be a part of. Obviously, Logan isn't here again today. He decided that um, you know a while ago he committed to having to work a night shift at another business, so he's working tonight. So um, I feel like we're going to save that one. I, I, f- I feel like you guys are okay with not doing the most drunken moment in the last 10 minutes, I'm assuming, unless you want to do it. That's up to you. Can we, no. Can I mean, we, I don't know if all of us could do our most drunken moment in the last 10 minutes. I mean, that's what I was thinking. I think we, we find an episode that, uh, you know, the conversation might not be flowing as well, which probably isn't going to happen. And we'll do that out. there. So we'll just spin one. We'll just spin one. A couple of people did throw out some, uh, some, some suggestions for the picker wheel. And I did add them. So uh, the, the, what was added was a uh, favorite Tom Hanks movie and favorite uh, somebody else's movie. I did add both of them. So, Let's do the thing. Let's spin it. I've always been anxious about the battle bot one. Favorite MCU movie. Favorite MCU movie. The fuck is MCU? <laughs> Marvel comic universe. Marvel, the Marvel okay. comic universe. What the okay. Fuck? Okay. That's on me. That's Where on have me. you been? <laughs> I don't know. I was thinking like. I thought it said like MD. I was thinking Maurice Jones Drew. I thought it was like MJ. I don't. I thought maybe he was an actor. You know, what? let's kick it off. You know what? Hey, Matt, what's your favorite MCU movie? Uh, <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> He's I mean, like, we've said this on. The, we've said this on the show enough. Not a big movie guy. Not a big TV show guy. Um, Marvel movie. Marvel. Which oh. one is Marvel? I'm not a comic book guy either. <laughs> uh, we're gonna we're gonna move right past this. Uh and we're gonna go right to producer Zach. And I'm gonna shovel pass it to Toby. You don't know any oh, so you fuck you put me on the big screen and you don't know any Marvel <laughs> movies either. MCU, man. I didn't even know what it meant. I, I at least I know what it meant. I it, it would, for me it would be bad because I've seen two. And so Ant-Man and the Wasp, I guess, is my favorite because I'm very close to being erotically in love with Paul Rudd. And that's really it. I mean. Oh, so we went. We had a guy on the show earlier that was very, very erotically in love with Will Smith. And now we have a guy that's Paul Rudd. Almost, I said. I fell in love with him when he was in love with Phoebe. And now I love him even more as an adult. I don't. I, mean, I got to admit, I don't even really know which ones uh, without looking up our Marvel. So I'm gonna. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. This is gonna be a big Brandon Toby conversation. I'll well, go first. Well, here's here's the question, and, and since Brandon, it is between you and I. Let me let me ask you this question: Are we talking about movies that are only considered announced as MCU movies, or movies that contain Marvel characters? I don't fucking know because I've never seen any of them. <laughs> <laughs> fucking Christ! Wow. That was, that's why I was trying to talk first. I, I, the last maybe maybe this is the case. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't even know the difference between Marvel and whatever the fucking other one is. Spider Man. How are we the charge on this conversation? The last movie I saw that had some superhero in it. Because if I want to watch fake stuff, I watch wrestling. Okay, pro wrestling, that's what I do. Or the NFL. I watch those two things. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, um, so this just got really one-sided really quick. And maybe, Toby, if you start throwing out some movies, we'll know about Marvel. Uh, I, I uh, I don't know if I've watched... I mean, I think I've watched a Batman movie. That's DC. I know, but it's not... I'm just saying, like, comic book wise. Like, Oh, okay. There was a sh- right. there was a show, and, and I'm sorry, it, it it does stand for Marvel Cinematic Universe. So, um, oh, right. oh, okay, I see. I don't know. Still didn't know. Thank you. There, there, there are technically uh, 22 of the MCU movies. What they call MCU. How, how many uh, do you think you've seen of the 22? All of them. Holy shit! It wasn't that... even a pause. <laughs> you, wow. Them. Is that angel cackling in the background? That's angel cackling in the background. <laughs> Leonardo DiCaprio has gotten a lot of crap from a lot of people lately. Whatever. He's whatever. in Marvel? Nope. Let me let me just oh. say this real quick. He gave another actor some advice about his acting career. He said two things. No hard drugs and no comic movies. No. <laughs> and I love him for that. Producer Zach, so, are you going to be able to stay awake? I don't know what's wrong with you. I'm not even tired. 
Like, let me give you guys what? some examples oh. of outside okay. what, what they call outside of the MCU Marvel movies. All right. Like you've got Red Sonia, Howard the Duck, oh. Men in Black, Blade. Blade is X-Men. MCU. Yep. Blade is Blade, Blade is, is a Marvel MCU. character. All of the X-Men. Right? Like uh Daredevil. The mm-hmm. Punisher. See, I thought all those uh, were DC. Daredevil is Daredevil is Marvel. See, I, I only based that off of the fact that they don't get the shine in the same way that like the Captain Americas, the Hulks, the right. Avengers, that sort of thing do. So I just assumed they were DC yeah. due to exclusion from the spotlight. You've got the Fantastic Four, Kick Ass, Ghost Rider. Fuck Nick Cage. Right? Like, I mean, <laughs> Big Hero 6, the Pixar movie, the Disney movie, that's that's a Marvel character. Oh, so well, you've got Deadpool. One, All of these characters are, even the Kingsmen are, are Marvel characters, which is why I said, are we only including the Marvel Cinematic Universe as, as it's like officially called like with the avengers captain america iron man you know the ones that we all know spider-man and all so and so forth or are we including so i want to know i want to know by the audience am i allowed to pick outside of what is considered the formal mcu or do i have to keep it within the formal mcu you know 22 movies so not of the formal 22 is there's got to be way more than 22 Oh, yeah, way, 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 way more. There's like 69 there's well of them. Over, oh, yeah, there's like well over 50 easily. 69. You've seen um, them all. I'm, if I'm going on the, if I'm going, yeah. <laughs> all right. So we got uh, outside, outside, all time fave. Okay. So all if Marvel. I'm going outside, if I'm going outside, I'm either going with, um, with either uh, Deadpool or the King, Kingsman. Okay. Those are probably my two favorite. And I know that they're more recent, but nobody wants to watch the original Captain America movie. Trust me. I don't. You don't. No, nope. you don't. Um, what about I Duck? do love I do love Venom. Um, I actually am one of the people that really liked Howard the Duck as opposed to the majority of the people that didn't. Um, but if I had to pick within the MCU movies, if if that's either got to go with Black Panther or it's got to go with the last Avengers movie. I'm sorry. It's got to go with one of those two. You don't have to be sorry about it. I mean, it's your opinion. Yeah. And to be honest, I haven't seen any of them, so I'm going to agree with you. Um, did they both probably do pretty well in the box office, or were they just because oh, – did they? I, and this is me not knowing. There were, okay. Well, we did a poll, I also, though. I also really I also really liked um, the original – the first Wonder Woman movie. Really okay. liked that. Um, all of the very first movies um, of the – within the, the formal MCU is what they call it. Like the very first Iron Man, um, I will go with the very first Spider Man with Tom Holland, because that's after that's when Spider Man was introduced into the formal MCU. Um, sorry, kids, Tobey Maguire is just nostalgic. He's not a good Spider Man. Um, there is a good Spider Man. Oh yeah, Tom Holland. Hmm. Um, and then uh, I'll go with the very first Captain America. Like I'll go with. Um, the very first Mark Ruffalo Hulk, like all of those very firsts that really kind of kicked each of these character arcs in the, the formal MCU off mm-hmm. and have all been phenomenal movies. Mark Ruffalo is just the man. I just want to throw that out there. I mean, he's kind of a dick, but yeah, I mean, he's really, as far as, Oh yeah. Yeah. But as far as his character goes, he's, did they ever make a chip after him? Cause Mark Ruffalo would be a hell of a ruffle. Mark like, Ruffalo's. Trip. Crossover between cereal and potato chips. Mark Ruffalo's. We just Mark, uh, you get you get ruffle ruffles potato chips to get with Cheerios. Mm-hmm. And you make Ruffalo's breakfast cereal. Yeah, and, and then you do it with the like Buffalo apple. Bills. Yeah, Mark Ruffle Buffalo's. Wow. So then it turns your milk spicy. Mm. But yeah, I mean all all of them to include Guardians of the Galaxy, the, the very first Guardians. Guardians. It's really hard to pick. Um the more current uh, out of the like the more current mcu like family of movies because they're all just over they're they're just all over they're they're, all of them are just so over the top the cgi is so well done on the cgi parts like you 
But if you're looking for a series to watch, if you've never watched any of them and you're truly looking for like, I want to watch all of like just one character. My recommendation to you is watch all the Thor movies because they are uh, the best out of the entire series. Just mm -hmm. because uh, Chris Hemsworth brings like this comedy portion to Thor that like breaks up any of the like the lower moments. Like he's always kind of got like this. He's like the dumb jock like in a humorous way throughout like every movie and like, and they're all done so well. The only one that I haven't seen yet is Thor love and thunder. And I, I'm just, that sounds I'm, like I got it. Name. I just haven't yeah. sat down to watch it yet. There's definitely, a wiener in definitely a poor name, but yeah, I heard, uh, I heard Thor likes butts over boobs. So I'm definitely going to probably check that out. We're going to spin one real quick for next week, unless we get to the drunk moments or whatever. And what do we have? That's sexual, sexual craziest. I need your story. help with this one, baby. Well, that hmm. could get a little interesting. Uh, thanks to whoever put that out there. I'm sure that's not going to cause any moments with any of our lives. But either way, if you have any questions, bring them next week on the picker wheel. Submit them in uh, in in the in the comment section after this live ends. Feel free to do that. Thanks to uh, thanks everybody. That's our time. Thanks to everybody that watched this. Appreciate you. Thanks. Uh, allegedly, we're in the brand new Copper John's Beard Barbershop live through there. Shout out Amanda, the manager yeah, shout there. Out Amanda. Hell of a job earlier, Amanda. And uh, yeah, shout out to Brandon, Jay McDermott, follow him on the social medias, Toby as well. Uh, what are you going to guys know? Toby and Angel and Toby and Angel 2. Is that is that what the handles are? Uh, right? it's, Toby and, it's Toby and Angel and then I am the Toby is what it is. I about. am the Toby. Okay. So follow both of those. If I'm sure most of you guys already did, and follow him. Are you, are you even on social? You're on the social, but you're not. Yeah. A, he's not. A, he's not doing videos. Uh, yeah. What is it again? The the one known as Dad. I'm um, the one known as Dad at TikTok and Instagram, and I am Sweeney underscore Zach Z A C on Twitter. There we go. Follow the socials if you want. Twitter. I, follow me on Twitter. Oh, that's pretty bossy. I mean, follow him on Twitter. No. It's just his name backwards, and now everybody knows your real name. That was really yeah. smart. It's no. It's 2022. You get a code. Yeah, Anyways, yeah. that's all we got. We could do the outro again because we have figured out this whole thing with copyright. So we'll uh, we'll be back Tuesday with Triple T with Rozzy, Toby, myself. You've been whacking off. We'll be back next Thursday. Who's been whacking off? Guess what next Thursday is, guys? Three-year anniversary. Oh, wow. Unless my math is wrong. But I'm pretty sure it's three years, and I'm going to try to line up some really cool shit to give away and just like just really have a three-year party. So I'm going to do the math one more time, but I'm pretty sure it's next week because, yeah. I'm going to rent a suit. Oh, he's going to rent a suit, and we're going to have fun. But we'll be back next week. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Thanks, you dudes in the studio. We're out of here. Okay, bye. <laughs>